Praise the Lord. A very pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is Father's Day, so I just want to take time out to wish all fathers under the sound of my voice a very happy Father's Day. This day is set aside to let you know how much you are loved and appreciated, especially the fathers of Rhema Fellowship Ministries. I pray God's continued grace upon your lives in these trying times. Remember, that God is the father of all fathers, and you can call upon him at any time. I encourage you to enjoy your day to the max. You deserve all the love and attention that will be showered upon you. So once again, I say a happy Father's Day to you all. The word of God says in Psalm 92 and verse 1, it is good to say thank you to the Lord, to sing praises to the God who is above all gods. So wherever you are, just lift your hands and thank God for life. Many have gone on but we are still here. And that is enough to say, Father, we thank you that we are alive and well. Thank you for your breath of life in us. Your word says, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. And Father, we praise you. We bless your holy name. We declare that you are God and God alone. Beside you, there is no other. You alone deserve our praise and our worship. And we give it all to you, holding nothing back. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to go back in time to 1973 when my husband and I got saved. In those days, we didn't have access to teachings on spiritual warfare prayers as we do now. But we knew about calling on the name of Jesus, as Joel chapter 2 and verse 32 says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. We also knew to pray the word of God. And we knew to plead the blood of Jesus and draw a bloodline with the blood of Jesus between ourselves and the enemy. Because Satan is afraid of the name of Jesus and of the blood of Jesus. He knows that that is how we overcome and have victory over him. Amen? One songwriter penned the words to the song, to the song sorry, Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Would you, O oh evil, a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. And the chorus goes on to say, there is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I say to you this morning that in this evil day 
of a pandemic, sorry, pandemic, when the world has been thrown into economic chaos and families are losing their loved ones by the threes and fours, that it is time to draw the line. What line, Sister Richards? The bloodline. Using what, Sister Richards? The blood of Jesus. And when you draw the bloodline between the enemy and you and your family, your finances, your health, etc., you'll be doing it with the understanding after this teaching that the blood of Jesus is the primary weapon for the final hour of this age. And in case you didn't realize it, we are in the final hour of this grace age. And hear what? The devil knows that his lease is almost up. So he has doubled his efforts to deceive, frustrate, and destroy man. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. I repeat, thank God for the blood of Jesus. This morning, I am ministering on the topic, it is time to draw the bloodline. It is time to draw the bloodline. And our text is taken from the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. And permit me to read from the Living Bible. Verse 9 says, And since by his blood he did all this for us as sinners, how much more will he do for us now that he has declared us not guilty? Now he will save us from all of God's wrath to come. Amen? Two sources of wrath are referenced in the Bible. The wrath of God and the wrath of Satan. And Jesus is our protection from them both. Hallelujah. I need to say here that unlike the wrath of Satan, the wrath of God is not against man, but it is against sin. Amen? Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29 tells us, for our God is a consuming fire. What does he consume? He consumes sin. And that is why when man fell from glory, he could no longer abide in God's presence. Had there not been a lamb slain before the creation of Adam, man never again would have had access to God. I say again, thank God for the blood of Jesus and thank God for this new covenant of grace, which is a better covenant than the other covenants that have gone before. For we now have access into the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we continue with this discourse on the bloodline, let's look at the source of the power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 9, and we'll read verses 13 and 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. And it reads, 
For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? No. The blood possesses its power to cleanse and to make us fit to serve the living God by the eternal spirit who was in our Lord when he shed his blood. As a matter of fact, the shedding of the blood of Jesus, and listen carefully to what I have to say, was brought about by the eternal spirit. And the spirit lived and worked in that blood because Jesus was a man and his blood would have become putrid like any other man's blood. As a result, when the blood was shed, it could not decay as a dead thing, but as a living reality, it could be taken up to heaven to exercise its divine power as the atoning blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel like jumping. Stick with me. Be patient with me. I know where I'm headed. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John chapter 16 and verse 7, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Why? Because as long as sin was not atoned for, God by his spirit could not take up a settled abode in the heart of man. Our Lord Jesus had to die before he could baptize with the Holy Spirit. Man must sacrifice his sinful life, bear the penalty of his sin, and surrender himself entirely to God before God could dwell in him with his life. What man himself could not do, the Lord Jesus, the Son of Man, did for him. He shed his blood. And let me say that the shedding of the blood of Jesus was not an afterthought to the fall of man because God never plays catch up to Satan. Amen? Some of us have the wrong idea of when God decided that blood would atone for sin. Listen carefully to what I am saying. The bloodline, saints of God, has a heavenly terminal. Whence its redeeming flow began before the foundation of the world. First Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 20 tells us, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Hallelujah. 
When God created Adam, he knew his will would be tested by Satan. God is omniscient. He knew that Adam would fall, which is why he created him and those of his kind as creatures of blood. Amen. The very life of man would be in his blood. Life was placed in earthen vessels that it could be poured out, hallelujah, a life for a life. Isn't God great? Could we ever begin to understand the level of God's thoughts? Saints, the bloodline begins in heaven, circles down to earth through types and shadows, is manifested and consummated in Christ Jesus, and is returned to heaven to God's glory, where it speaks mercy for us in the Father's presence. Hallelujah. What a great and mighty God. After man fell from glory, and they, Adam and Eve, were clothed with the glory of God, God himself shed the first blood in type when he made coats of animal skins to cover man. God showed man that blood would cover him until he could again be clothed in glory. Amen? He thus began the Old Testament long demonstration through the shed blood of animals of the pouring out of a life for a life. Hallelujah. One of the most enlightening Old Testament demonstrations of the power of the bloodline is given to us by God the night he delivered Israel from the slavery of Egypt. We all know the story. Moses told the Pharaoh to let God's people go. Nine times the Pharaoh refused. And each time he did so, Egypt suffered a plague. Finally, God sent Moses to warn Pharaoh that if he again refused to let the Israelites go, his nation would suffer a greater judgment than they had yet seen. A plague would take the life of every firstborn in every household as well as the firstborn of all the animals. But still, Pharaoh said no. It is important to realize that this night of death was judgment. Mankind had sinned. The wages of sin is death. God's hand had withheld the judgment due man for sin. This night, however, God would allow the destroyer to exact the penalty for sin. Egypt certainly had sinned against God. We would all agree with that. The problem was, however, that Israel was also legally due the wages of sin. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 tells us, all have sinned. But God had a plan which would keep them, the Israelites, from harm. Even though judgment and death 
would surround them on every side. Which is why Moses wrote in Psalm 91 and verse 10, a thousand may fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. You see, God instituted the Passover judgment due to them, passed over the children of Israel because of the place of the blood in God's great plan of redemption. Hallelujah. This wondrous event, and it was a wondrous event, shows us that the blood of Jesus stands between God's covenant people and all the power of the enemy to execute the penalty for sin. I'll say it again. The blood of Jesus stands between God's covenant people and all the power of the enemy to execute the penalty for sin. Think about it. The blood of a little lamb stood between the children of Israel and the destroyer. He was held at bay by the blood of a lamb. You, have, you may ask the question, how could the blood of an animal have so much power? It was because it was a type and shadow of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear this. Moses and the children of Israel entered the circle of the bloodline of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world and drew its protection around them. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 28 tells us that they did so by faith. It reads, through faith, Moses kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Since it would not have been enough on that first Passover for the Israelites just to have heard about God's plan. It would not have been enough for them to have believed the Lamb's blood could protect them or just to have appreciated its worth. What availed was the blood applied. Hallelujah. The same is true today. It is not enough for us believers to know and appreciate the value of the blood of Jesus. It is his blood personally applied that avails. Amen? How do you apply the blood? You apply the blood by faith faith. That is how we receive everything from God. And faith is in two places. It is in your heart and in your mouth, as Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 tells us. Child of God, you can draw the bloodline every day of your life between you and all the power of the enemy. You can draw the bloodline to encompass all that salvation affords. You can draw it by faith 
because you believe in your heart and you say it with your mouth. Hallelujah. Do not keep magnifying the virus and worrying about the number of people who are dying from it every day. Focus on the power of the blood of Jesus. Draw the bloodline between you, your family, and the COVID-19 virus by faith and enter the circle of God's divine protection against the virus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Moses and the children of Israel were saved by entering into the circle of the bloodline. And I just want to give you a modern day testimony of the power of the bloodline. Just to reinforce the truth that the blood of Jesus will never lose its power. That blood of Jesus is still as efficacious today as when it flowed that Friday on Calvary's mountain. Hallelujah. And the testimony is about a minister called Stevens. He and his wife were conducting meetings in Canada in a large church. They had left their children in the care of grandparents in Tennessee. The meetings were very damaging to Satan's kingdom in that many people were coming to the Lord Jesus and many were being set free from bondages. Because of the success of these meetings, the devil became infuriated and began to torment Brother Stevens with fear. Brother Stevens became a fear that the devil was going to kill his children. And I will have you know that fear is one of Satan's primary weapons of torment. So do not become fearful of the coronavirus. Brother Stephen shouted one night in prayer, Devil, you are a liar. You cannot kill my children. To this, the devil seemed to say, Oh, yes, I can. For I have put rabies upon the foxes in the woods adjoining your property. Immediately, Brother Stevens remembered the reports of friends who had seen foxes roaming on his land before he left Tennessee. And you know what he did? In simple, childlike faith, he gathered three other believers together. They agreed in prayer and drew a bloodline of protection around his property in Tennessee. And they trusted God. One week later, Brother Stevens received a call from his brother back in Tennessee. He said, I was walking along the boundary of your line, of your land, sorry, and lying around the edge of your property, I found five dead foxes. He went on to say, I had the heads examined and found out that they were all rabid. You see, saints of God, the foxes had dropped dead when they tried to cross the bloodline. Amen? And that's not all. When another pastor heard this testimony, he got his answer. For months, thieves had been regularly breaking into his ministry's office, vandalizing and causing great devastation. 
He had security devices installed. He worked with the police, but nothing stopped the intruders until he heard that testimony and began drawing a bloodline around his office. The rest is history. The office was never broken into again. Hallelujah. Another songwriter says, and you know I love my hymns, Christ, our Redeemer, died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his due. Sprinkle your soul with the blood of the Lamb, and I will pass, will pass over you. The chorus says, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Amen? Hallelujah. The blood is our primary weapon against Satan in this final hour. Do not ever forget that. Plead the blood of Jesus on your family, as that singer said. Plead the blood of Jesus on your finances. Amen? Plead the blood of Jesus upon your health. Hallelujah. And for those of you who have not made Jesus Lord of your lives, for those of you who refuse to believe the report God gave of his son, I say to you this morning, if the blood of Jesus is not applied to your heart, the destroyer will get you. Take my advice and enter into the circle of the bloodline where you would be safe for all eternity. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord God, the psalmist says that we ought to give thanks unto you because you are good and your mercy endures forever. We thank you for the blood of Jesus and its atoning power. We thank you, Father God, that you have chosen us to be a part of your family. We thank you that you're a good, good father to us, O oh God. This morning, we thank you for your word that was ministered on the power of the bloodline. And Lord, we receive that word and we will apply it to our lives, especially in these times, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we trust you because you are our God. And your word says, those of us who trust you will never be disappointed. So we lean and rely on your promises knowing that you will deliver us, as your word says. And Father, we commit to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' holy and mighty name. And we all say, amen, and amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.